I want to say welcome uh, to everyone to the Global History Initiative's annual workshop series hosted by Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. My name is Michael Borsk, and I'm one of the organizers of this year's workshop. Along with my co-organizers, I want to say how pleased we all are that you could join us here today as we officially begin our program. As our theme for this year's conference is Global Histories of Colonialism, let us begin by acknowledging that Queen's University is situated on the territorial lands of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee nations. We are grateful to live, learn, and be on these lands. While we are not all able to gather in Katarakwe today, we are pleased for the ability to come together to think about how the legacies of colonialism have shaped our relationship to the lands we inhabit across the globe. Though our conversations over the next two days focus on the histories of colonialism in a global context, we really want to ground these paths in the locales where they were enacted, experienced, and resisted. In the new histories of colonialism that this global framework offers, we find plurality amidst claims to universality, integration instead of isolation, and other forms of relationality that disrupt pre-existing narratives which frame colonial spaces as separate places across the globe. We are pleased to share with you all a wonderful selection of papers on the colonial histories of international law and modernity, science and technology, anti-colonial and anti-imperial movements, and imperial connections through a global lens. Through our discussions today and tomorrow, we intend to understand how the colonial and the global brought one another into being and to interrogate their hierarchies of knowledge and power that persists and require rethinking. Today, we look forward to look, we look back to look forward. We see this workshop as marking the start of future discussions about colonialism and global history. But as the exemplary research of our participants has shown, the significance of this scholarship is not limited to the academy. As the world sees the rise of authoritarian strongmen, weathers yet another wave of the ongoing pandemic, and witnesses the increasingly clear effects of climate change, institutions and ideas once felt to be solid have been shaken. Our increasingly globalized and volatile world is one marked by both the most far-reaching levels of connection ever experienced and divisions that only seem to run deeper. Explaining our collective present and creating better revolutionary futures require that we understand these colonial pasts. As the anti-colonial philosopher and revolutionary Franz Fanon remarked, the colonial world is a world cut in two. In the overlapping space between our scholarship, our activism, and our lives, we work towards a decolonial world that is whole. Now, before I turn it over to one of the GHI's faculty conveners, Professor Amatov Chowdhury, I want to give a quick overview of our program. Today, we have three fantastic panels before our concluding keynote address by Professor Tony Ballantyne at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow, we'll have another three really stimulating panels before Professor Chris Munjopper gives his keynote, also at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We invite you all to participate in as many of our panels as you can. And for our panelists and chairs, please feel free to drop into the Discord server we have set up to socialize in a more informal setting during any of our breaks. If you have any questions at all, please direct them to myself or my fellow organizers who you'll be meeting throughout the day at the panels. And lastly, a big thank you to everyone who made this workshop possible, including our chairs for donating their time, our panelists for some wonderful papers, the Bernice Nugent request for financial support, and the administrative staff at Queen's University's History Department. I look forward to seeing you all over the next few days. And over to you, Amitabh. Hello, everyone. Uh, I was just about to begin by saying good morning, uh, but then I realized that many of you are joining in from other parts of the world where it is late afternoon or evening. And that makes me wonder, as it has many times in the past, uh, that just as global history is equipped to evacuate historical processes of the notion of space, especially territorially bounded political units, it equally allows us to transcend the limits of time. I'm Amitav Chaudhary. I'm a member of the faculty here in the Department of History at Queen's University, Canada. And I'm one, one of the co-conveners of the Global History Initiative here at Queen's University, housed in the Department of History. So it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of my colleague and co-convener, uh, Professor Ishita Pandey, and indeed uh, on behalf of the Department of History at Queen's. Um, some of us were discussing the other day uh, that in a world ravaged by a raging pandemic, um, a world 
perhaps soon to be rendered unrecognizable, perhaps, uh, still has salvaged some advantages from that attack of the virus. You can see a blue sky in Calcutta, I'm told. The other advantage is, of course, an occasion like this, um, a conference which would have hardly been possible under regular circumstances with participants and attendees from far-flung areas of the world. The Global History Initiative uh, is a research forum located here at Queen's with ties to institutions in other parts of the world. And um, it allows uh, now substantial, allows our now substantial graduate student body here at Queen's who work on elements or aspects of global history uh, to come together with uh, peers and colleagues in other parts of the world. And it allows for uh, meaningful collaborations, exchange, uh, joint initiatives. And one hopes that we are uh, merely scratching the surface and have a bright future ahead of us. Um, I hope that this conference would allow us to form new networks of solidarity, and meaningful partnerships and associations in the time to come. Indeed, why else would we organize a conference? Um, I want to congratulate the organizers of the conference. Uh, this is not a graduate student conference, but this is organized by all of our graduate students, especially uh, the team, Elise Bell, Alex Martin Burrow, Mike Borsk, uh, Ksenia Podvoyskaya, Mike Ross, and uh, Russell Arbic. Uh, they have done an incredible job in organizing this conference and setting up all the technology and the invitations in a seamless manner. Hopefully everything will go well. Um, so today and tomorrow, the themes and papers in the conference vary from ruminations on colonial knowledge, decolonization, anti-colonialism, notions of internationalism and subjectivity, imperial policymaking, labor regulations, and geopolitics. Um, overall, the themes of the conference hopes to interrogate the interface of studies of colonialism and global history. And I look forward to a rich and enriching set of discussions. Um, I would, however, like to leave all of us uh, with a guiding goal uh, for the conference. And I hope that uh, many of the empirical adventures would allow us um, to evaluate the meaning of global history vis-a-vis -vis imperial history. So is global history, imperial history writ large? Is the latter subsumed by the former? Or are they, are they inimically disposed somehow? Where does imperial history end and global history begin? And indeed, is there any substantive meaningful difference between what we now call new imperial history and global history. So these are my hopes and goals. And on that note, uh, let me say that the conference is now open and let's welcome the proceedings of the first panel. Thank you. <laughs>